Okay, so if you're just starting to learn how to code, or maybe you've already finished your first course, or maybe you're in the middle of my favorite course, CS50, I wanna show you how to make a CV and start applying for jobs today. I've said it in a couple of videos already, you do not need to wait until you finish your course in order to apply for jobs. All right, so here we have the current template that I'm using. I am going to make this available for you in the link at the bottom of this video. And the first thing that sticks out obviously is the first and last name. You wanna definitely be a little original. Uh, you wanna stick out from the competition. So that would be for the first and last name. And then over here we have what I would say is the single most important line in the entire CV. Now, every CV that I sent out is matched to the position that I am applying for. So over here, I am branding myself as an IT support specialist because that's the position that I'm applying for. When I'm applying to project manager jobs, then I write over here, IT project manager. Make sure that you read well the job description, what it is that they're looking for, and try to match your CV to all those requirements. All right, so moving on, on the top right over here, very prominently displayed, I have what would be my phone number and obviously my city and my state where I am located. I think that's a good idea to have that for remote jobs. Definitely if you're applying to remote jobs for a US company and you're based in the US, automatically you will be given priority over people who are applying from overseas. It's just a lot easier for companies to hire locally than to have to go through all the trouble and all the legal requirements and all the paperwork that is required in order to hire someone overseas. And obviously you also wanna have your email in here, so I put that in. And another thing that I went ahead and I did, which I think would help me stand out from the competition, is to make myself a personal website. I have a separate video on this channel about how to make your personal website and brand yourself it is a big selling point to have your own personal website where you really go into detail about all the things that you've accomplished and what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your future job. And I think that this is a great way to make a good impression on the recruiter. Okay, so after the header, I went on and I wrote a profile. Now, what is a profile? A profile is basically like a one-liner, call it an elevator pitch of who I am and why someone should hire me. So in my profile, I write that I have a strong base in programming, in electronics, in information systems. Keep in mind that the profile here will be slightly different if I were applying for a project management. I wouldn't talk so much here about the electronics or the customer service skills. I would be talking more about my project management skills. But again, this is just a very short one sentence about you. And basically the goal of this profile here is just to convince the reader to continue reading your CV. I listed my education here. Now, I put the most recent education on top. So I did complete the Google IT Support Professional Certificate from Coursera. I talked about that in a different video. I don't necessarily recommend this uh, if you want to get into IT. I recommend more the CCNA or the CompTA. So these are all the skills that they teach you in the certificate. Again, I just copy pasted that. Okay, so the next item on my education here is Harvard University CS50. Now, I did take three courses from them. So I took the main course, plus I took the Introduction to Python course and the Web Development course. So what I did, again, I went right into their website and I literally just copied all the items from the syllabus. So the title of each week here, I just copy and pasted that into my CV. Now, I didn't include Scratch because I don't think anyone is hiring for Scratch, but I did include a lot of the other stuff. And I also included some, some additional things which I learned about as part of my final projects. Now, at this point, I was feeling like maybe I don't have enough items on my list. And when I made this, this version of the CV, it was right around the time where I had just had my first interview for, a, for an IT position. And I had just learned about this whole world about DevOps and CICD. So I thought, why don't I just add another item to my education? It'll be more helpful for me to have that on my CV moving forward if all I'm trying to do right now is to apply for entry-level IT jobs. So I went ahead and um, I just added here an IBM DevOps course, which I still haven't completed, but I did write it in here that I'm still in progress. And I just, again, copied like very general topics that I'm touching during the course. And I feel like this is helping me 
show that I'm very committed and that I am moving forward towards a career in the field that I'm applying for. Now, I do have one last item here on my education. This actually doesn't have anything to do with computer science. I just have a biology degree from back in the day when I went to college. And for the skills here, I put like all the skills that I learned as part of my internships. So instead of putting in like these random classes that I took, I just wrote in what were the real like money-making skills that I learned during my degree. And those were biomedical research, bioinformatics, etc., etc. And I feel like this really shows that I'm not just some guy that just started learning to code, even though I really am. And my goal in putting this down is that number one, a lot of these jobs that I've been applying to, even though they require like a computer science degree, I'm like trying to show that, look guys, even though my background is in biology, which is still within the sciences, even though my background is over there, I am able to acquire new skills quickly. And I do have an analytical mind and a scientific mind and I can you know move forward in whichever endeavor I'm trying to accomplish for you. So that's sort of my goal of putting in my like my previous college information. If you have a previous college degree, I recommend that you put it down. Like it just can't hurt. Like it'll just show that, you know, I'm a guy who starts something, I can finish something, I have this background. And if you put it down, try to stay away from like whatever courses you took and try, try to focus on the skills that you picked up in college. For me, when people ask me what I really learned in college, I really learned how to learn. So that's something that I feel like you could apply to anything. After all my education, I list my experience. And the reason I did that is because I personally feel like my education is stronger than my experience. If I was a guy that with five years of DevOps experience, if I was a guy with you know five years of full stack development experience, that would be on top of my CV and my education would be on the bottom. But because I don't feel very confident about my computer science experience, I put that, I leave that at the bottom. And my goal here is to show that I am committed. That's really my goal. You have to have a goal in mind when you put in your experience. My experience here is not to show my accomplishments in computer science, because honestly, I don't have many. But I am able to show with this experience that, you know, I'm committed, I'm taking initiative, I'm learning constantly. I feel like what I wrote here is open for debate. There's a lot of people recommend putting it. There's a lot of people that say, don't put this. And that is, I putting down here my own personal project. These are not projects that I got paid for. These are projects that I worked on on my free time at home. And that's why I labeled them as home lab. And what I did was basically, I just got myself a server, which is actually back here, this box. And I got myself a switch, which is uh, behind over there. And I just set all that up to run the app that I built during CS50. So the app that you build in CS50, you get to run it in like a trial environment, the CS50 environment. But I wanted to do a little bit more and to like understand more about like hosting the app somewhere else. And like, oh, I actually learned a lot about networking, all these different topics. So I wrote that down as my experience here. Most people will read this and be like, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, whatever. That's not all. That's not that awesome of an experience. But that could be, that's like one school thought. Another school thought is, you know, this guy, he came from nothing and here he is building, you know, his own app and hosting in his own server. And that has been the response that I've been getting from recruiters when they see this item on the home lab. First of all, they ask, what is home lab? So I explained to them, you know, I have my own projects that I work on. I have a server at home and this is all part of my home network. And I really have like an enterprise level infrastructure at home that I'm really using to sharpen my IT skills. So when they hear that, they've been very impressed. They ask further questions about it and they look in their faces has been like wow like they're really interested in hearing more about it so if you don't have any real world experience in it or in computer science or anything just write down here whatever projects you've done so even if you have only the homeworks from your courses don't write that those were the homeworks of your courses just write home lab just like how it's here city state whatever and then just write whatever it is that you created okay so the next item here on the list is my current job so i have been a freelance video producer for the past 10 years however i don't write here that i'm a freelancer instead i write that i'm a producer at the company that i own so i make it seem as if I'm just another employee at this company and I don't really disclose to them that I own it. The reason I do this is because I think recruiters might be thrown off by the fact that I haven't had a traditional job for over 10 years and it might just open a can of worms for me in terms of topics that I don't wanna get into with them. If it comes out in an interview, they ask me, more about the company i will disclose that it is my own company but so far no one has really asked me they just asked me what is what is your current position like what have you done and then they just move on to other questions and i write that down here as a previous experience and i'm putting it below my home lab because this is a cv directed towards a tech job to them it should be more important the experience that i have in the tech field and any additional experience should be in order to support that what do i mean by that I didn't write in here all the tasks that I accomplished 
as a as a video creator. I didn't do that. I didn't write that. Instead, I focused on the accomplishments. So let's go over it very quickly. I deliver 200 plus projects for businesses, nonprofits, etc. This shows that I am able to deliver, that I'm responsible, that I'm creative, that I could keep customers happy. This this really shows a lot of different qualities about me that would be good for a potential employer. Set up efficient project workflows to keep track and everything and technical problems. Now here is where I try to like sugarcoat it. I try to make it look as if I had made an important contribution in terms of the tech at the current job. So try to tell a story within the lens of the job that you're trying to apply for. So moving on, I do list here some further experience that I, I did work at a TV station before becoming a full-time freelancer. Again, I try to tell my accomplishments at the TV station through the lenses of an IT support role. So even though I was really in charge of making videos, the fact that I encountered IT problems and managed to solve them on the go without any previous training shows that, you know, I could, I, I could do, I could do the job. I could, I can solve IT issues. And the last item on my CV here relates to my job experience. When I was a biology student in college, I did design and run experiments for a lab that I was working for. I did write research papers and by chance I managed to provide this data that led to a $5 million grant for the lab I was working for. And also here I put the link to the scientific publication of where all this work was published by my mentor. Really I had a very, very, very small role in the entire project. I mean, I was just a student, but again, I try to tell the story through the lenses of I'm able to be an innovative, I'm able to deliver quality work, I'm responsible, other people trust have trusted me in the past, you should also trust me, etc. This should be the general theme for your CV. Try not to focus so much on the knowledge that you have, instead try focusing on what makes you a good person and why someone should hire you based on your personal qualities. The professional qualities, you know, that's more of a given. Like obviously if you're applying for an IT job, you should know something about the IT. Obviously if you're applying for a web development job, you should know how to make a full stack application. Like those are givens, but there's a lot of people who have the same qualifications. So what makes you better over a different candidate for the job? It's who you are as a person.